the sports box. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the sports box, where the only opinion that matters. Right here, I am Mike Letta, aka Hampton Mike, along with my scared but here partner, Brian the Ranger of Tart. Bringing you another great segment we call our own. Today we are going to talk about, well, Brian, how are you today? I have to I, ask you. Well, I, I mean, I didn't get hit by your projectile, that's, so that, that's, that's always a good thing. That's, that's good. good. We're going to have, have one where you get hit and go to the hospital. That's going to be a great special. Ugh, I am insured. Well, today, actually, I was thinking about dropping Brian through the table, but we're not going to. This is our WWE Roadblock game, our show we're going to do for you. Today on the show, we have a guest, Anthony Morella. Anthony. That's right. Calm down. All right, there's all right. He's all right. He's done. Uh, we're going to talk a little WWE for you. Brian, take it away. So we're going to do a little recap of an okay episode of Raw. I mean the Roadblock pay-per-view. Um, really, really underwhelmed yeah, as a whole. Um, Is that because of throw? Or? No, no. It just it, it felt like a bad episode of Raw, and I think that that's what you're seeing a lot of these bridge pay-per-views feel like. But I want to go over a couple of the highlights here that we're going to just do a little recap here. Um, we're going to skip the pre-show because that match had absolutely no impact on anything. But we're going to go to the, the New Day, finally. Spoiler, it was a count-out. Like I said, nothing for anything. <laughs> uh, the New Day, finally dropping the tag team titles. Thank goodness. Not to who I would have thought they should drop them to, to Cesaro and Sheamus. Um, you know, we, we, we all felt that this was going to be something that happened to this pay-per-view because they'd finally gotten over the, the, uh, the record the Demolition had for back in the 80s of how long the tag team title reign. Um, for those of you who don't know, Demolition's currently embroiled in a class action lawsuit with WWE, so they had a little bit of extra incentive to make sure that that record went away. Um, Cesaro and Sheamus, though, Anthony, um, the, the, the yeah. new tag team champs. I don't know what to think about Just that. Just another tag team that WWE threw together because they couldn't think of anything to do with those two, and it's... It's kind of getting annoying. It was the same thing on SmackDown with, with Rhino and um, and Heath Slater. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of, I don't know what to do with you, and I don't know what to do with you, so we'll make you a tag team, and you go out and you beat the longest reigning tag team champs ever. Yeah. They're doing it just really to, to give them some credibility when there really isn't any credibility. I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like I said, you know, we always go back to these things like, you know, who could you have had somebody better have this moment? And I'm not saying that the New Day is going to, like, you know, go down as Hall of Famers here by any stretch. And I'm not going to say that. But, you know, again, I mean, you could have picked a younger tag team or a tag team that hadn't really had any, you know, even individual level success and given them that, oh, we broke the New Day streak. Instead, you put together this hodgepodge of Cesaro and Sheamus. By the way, I hate Cesaro's entrance. That is just so one of the dumbest dumb. things that they do. So dumb. But again, they're, they're, they're the, tag title, the tag title holders now. They debuted new red belts. That's a shocker uh, for, the, for the tag titles there. So uh, the New Day, no longer your WWE World Tag Team Champions. And no, I'm not going to do the Big E for you guys. I don't think it's necessary. Um, you don't want to see it. You want, never mind. No. So, give me, I'll give you a little bit of that. Yeah. No, you're not. It's no, too cold. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's too, too cold, cold in New yeah. Jersey for us to be doing that. Yeah. Um, give us some it, 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 In a match that was just kind of you know put together and odd, uh, the Sami Zayn, Braun Strowman thing. So and this felt like they really... They departed from Strowman's character a little bit here. Mm -hmm. He was seen arguing with people instead of just pushing them through things. Right. Um, I mean, Sami Zayn lasted the 10 minutes, but what is... Do, I mean, what, what did you think of where we are in this storyline? Because I, I don't think much of it, personally. It's not going anywhere. That's the problem. Um, I mean, I don't know what you're going to build it up to. Royal Rumble, and then you're going to have the same match or Royal Rumble, and nobody's still going to... Still nobody's going to care. Um, I get it where they're trying to give Sami Zayn that push against somebody bigger and better than him. But... What does it really do for Sami Zayn at the end of the day? I, mean, I, th I think they're playing the David Goliath type thing. We've seen that before. It's kind of overdone. Um, I just Sami Zayn's character doesn't have a lot of depth to it. I just think people aren't really that interested in. It. Um, so they're, they're trying to you know have him go up against the big guy and you know hey, we'll see where this goes into the future. What I felt was the match of the night, and I felt that way going in, and I didn't think it proved me wrong. Seth Rollins and Chris Jericho, two just absolute great technicians. Uh, Jericho's doing some of his best work. I feel that he ever has with WWE. Uh, it was a great match, you know, as we suspected, there was going to be some out to interference from Kevin Owens, but, you know, again, I, I think from a entertainment standpoint, probably the match of the night. Oh, yeah, so, well, maybe, until the next one we talk about. Okay. But, um, yeah, no, that's, they're, they're two guys I always wanted to see lock up in the ring. Uh, like Brian touched on, two great technicians, two high flyers, or at least Jericho was at one point. Um, Seth Rollins is just... He is the best WWE has right now. 
um, and they need to continue to, to push him to the main event stage, which I hope is coming. But, um, you know, Jericho did his job. He he's, keeps building people up. And that, that's really what he's here for. That, right that now. is, you know, he is coming back to, you know, to, to again push people forward. I mean, Jericho, you don't see that wins too many matches anymore. I think it was kind of by design. Um, now, when you said a match we were going to talk about, I hope it's not this one because this one I thought was a waste of my time. The uh, the, the title swap. Yes. No, not, not even that one. We're, we're going to get to that. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm referencing the Cruiserweight Championship. Oh, no, no, no. So, in my, in, in, in my preview of this Rich Swan versus Brian Kendrick versus TJ Perkins match, I said I didn't care who won. Um, I still don't care who won because the, they don't have anything going on with the cruiserweight division. Yeah. It's not getting it, any anywhere. Um, it Swan, need, it needs more. It needs more talent, and they do have that. They just yeah. it needs to come up. So well, Swan retained the title here, but I think the bigger story is you finally see Neville come back out of nowhere, yes. and it looks which like this cool. WWE is going to push him towards the cruiserweights, which really makes a lot of sense. It does because there's nothing else you can do with him. Yeah, I mean, if, if you put him into heavyweight matches, I mean, he really has that cruiserweight high flying style. Um, came back as a heel though. I think that's yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah, which is awesome. King is I kind actually of like that. One of the few things I liked. Yeah, but no, I mean, Swan keeps the belt. N nothing really there to discuss. Um, the Women's Championship 30-minute Iron Man match, Charlotte Flair versus Sasha Banks. Credit to you. You got this one right? Iron I did. Woman match. I did. The, you got the, this one right. The, the little that I do in this segment, yes, I did get that right. That's right. He got it right. So, the... Go to hell. I'm good. So, WWE, uh, again, hot potatoes this women's championship. And this is something that I think, I, I kind of understand what they're doing. I just think it makes no sense. Uh, we talked about this in the preview. She's now, Charlotte is now a four-time women's champion. Charlotte's been around for, what, a year and a half? If, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, you, you look at John Cena as a 15-time world champion. He hasn't held a belt for a while because Ric Flair had it for 16. And that's a big number. Yeah. So now that you have the women this early in their career, this many championship reigns, I, I just don't see the point. I don't see the point either. I'm not really sure what they're trying to do. I think one of them, if they are going to do this feud, and then they jumped into to Bailey last night with, with that whole thing with Charlotte, which was dumb. But um, if they're going to have this Sasha Banks-Charlotte feud go on, I think one of them has to have the title for an extended period of time. And then once they win it again, it's like, okay, wow, it was a big deal. Right now, it's just, here you go, here you go, here you go. Just take it, you take mm -hmm. it. It's dumb. See, I also think a little bit, in my own opinion here, with all, all due respect to my partners here, no wrestling, um, we, we analyze and overanalyze sometimes why they're doing this, why they're doing this. We talked a while, a while ago about Goldberg, why they're doing this, we get back in the ring. I think we should just run with it. I mean, this is what they're doing. They're mixing it up so people like us and people like you guys out there all say, yeah, you know, why are they doing it? it, it let's just run with it. Let's just have a good time. I get. I definitely get your point. Yeah. Well, I, no, I... But I, it, it, it's yeah. a little bit... From an you know, outsider's perspective. It's yeah. frustrating, though, sometimes, yeah. when you watch something and you're like, really? Like, they could have done so many different things right. with it. Yeah. Why? Why that? That's right. what's frustrating. It's like, why is you run an out, out pattern when you can run a fly pattern and the guy's yeah, wide exactly. open? So, I, I, get, I get you. And I, speaking of things like that, so Roman Reigns is back in the title picture. He did not beat Kevin Owens for the championship um, at Roadblock, but again, it was another match that was just mired in controversy. I, I did kind of like the way that they did it, though. I'll give them credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. So Jericho coming into the ring, yeah. giving a code breaker to Owens, playing off of the we're not best friends anymore storyline, and then everything was all planned the whole time. So yes. I did, I'll give them credit where credit's due for that standpoint. What I don't like personally and where I think this is headed, and we're going to talk about this in, in, in some other uh, segments that we have, is it looks like Roman Reigns is getting back into that championship picture. Yeah, uh, joy. And, yeah, and, and, and I don't I don't know how long Kevin Owens has with this belt, but... <laughs> That's a rousing endorsement. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll see where it goes again. Uh, so Owens retains uh, over Reigns. Uh, they're going to have another match now at the Royal Rumble where Chris Jericho will be suspended over the ring in a shark cage. That's right. Mm. Is shark going to be in it? No, he will be. Oh, okay. He will be in it. Hopefully, it'll be fun for the shark. And, and so. you know what's interesting too is so they the, just did that in TNA. Oh, not TNA. In no, NXT. NXT. Yeah. No, that's where that's where they got it from. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. The interesting part is so the Royal Rumble is at the Alamo Dome on January 29th. Uh, I'm going to be pretty interested to see how high up Chris Jericho gets held above the ring. To go on the budget, we can get down there. No, we're not going to get down there. All right. It so counts. Scratch that idea. Do what you can. Oh, the monkeys over there. Get, get, get us a flight. Please, they're having cheese Danish. Um, terrible. So, you know, all, all in all, it was seven matches. We include the pre-show. Horribly underwhelming. Um, you know, a, a lot of these month. ever since the brand split, I think some of these monthly pay-per-views, these Raw slash SmackDown specific shows, feel a lot like episodes of Raw and SmackDown. Now, Brian, Royal Rumble is a month away. How much of this impacts what they do at Royal Rumble, if any? 
Well, like I think a little bit here for sure. I mean, again, so you had you had Kevin Owens get defeated by this wall or win by disqualification. Yes. That match is now there as well. Mm-hmm. You've seen them continue this Rusev, uh, Lana, Big Cass, Enzo so, thing. Yeah. You'll probably see that. Uh, fly over again. So Cesaro and Sheamus, I would assume there would be some kind of a return match for the tag title, which I would assume that New Day does not win. Um, I would hope not. I think the Seth Rollins, Chris Jericho thing is coming closer to an end by every day. Um, I I mean, they didn't really do anything here. Nothing came to any kind of a halt, I guess, other than the Charlotte Sasha thing. That's your set. That's supposed to be the last match. Um, yeah, I don't think anything. It felt like an episode of Raw, and I think that's that every, what I mean. It, there should be some kind of, in a pay per view, there should be something that that screams to the fan base like, "Hey, this is what's coming up." Yeah. I got nothing out of this at yeah. all. Now, not, not a great effort by WWE in their last pay-per-view yeah. of the year, but again, the, the next one is the Royal Rumble, one of my favorite events of the year. We're going to be discussing that at length in another uh, segment here on the Sports Box, so keep an eye out for that and a lot more WWE Stick here to around. come as well. All right. That's, uh, thanks, thanks, guys. Appreciate that. It's always a pleasure doing wrestling here. It really is. I, I'm learning more and more by the second. It's a beautiful thing. Got That's why I'm here. That's it. You know what? We always have good segments coming, so keep an eye out. And, of course, if you want to see those great segments, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on YouTube. You know where it is. Uh, so make sure that you're subscribing to YouTube because everything that we post is going to be there first and foremost. And, of course, we had a very special sponsor for today's show. We do. Actually, thank you for bringing that up. Actually, today's sponsor is DJ Cruz, a.k.a. Anthony Cruz, for all your DJing and party needs. 609-513-6395. Make sure you give him a call. Tell him you saw it on the Sports Box. He'll take care of you. He's a good buddy of ours. Absolutely. So remember, at Sports Box, the only opinion that matters. Still right here. Thanks for watching, folks. See you. Don't forget to subscribe. The Sports Box.